Great to see the big fella back out there on the Saturday, mate. Um, how are you guys, the coaching staff? As I said, he hit the deck a few times. Do you get worried in that situation that we're going to have another injury? Nah, nah, definitely not. He, uh, I actually watched film with him yesterday and we looked back at one where he almost face planted and he was up and back down the other end. He's got a lot of adren adrenaline running through him right now. So uh, we're not worried about that. He goes 100%. I hit the floor three times and got up. And, uh, I was just excited to, and happy for him to see him back out there having fun. Yeah, as you said to him, Sam, do you hope you get to a real good track at it now? Obviously, just injury interrupted since he's been a, a jack jumper, really. But it'd be nice to see him get a full run at it. Yeah, most definitely. I, like, it's difficult. Injuries are difficult for any athlete. And Will's had some that have been very challenging, not just the normal everyday, you know, um, injuries. But he's been elite with his um, rehab. I feel like I've seen a, uh, a real growth in him as well as a, as a player, a young player still, you know, in terms of games. Um, but I'm just pleased. He's pleased. Like it's good to see him back out there. He brings a different dimension to our group, without a doubt. With his his strength, physicality, and his his presence in the paint as a rim protector is is felt by everyone in the league. Always happy to go on the road and get a win. Oh, I'm always happy to just get a win. It's, it's difficult to win in this league. Um, I just got talks about it all the time. It's uh, it's very even league. You don't come prepared take your foot off the gas, all of a sudden you turn around and you can be on a double header, you can be on a two game loss. So going to Adelaide and winning, who were up and about, you know, they were playing some pretty good basketball. So always pleased to win on the road and, you know, I've really kept this form going. Obviously, it's really improved in that game, especially those first quarter that they came up late, but I felt like it was really improved. Yeah, well, it's definitely been a focus um, for this sort of little period of recent that we, you know, defensively, this hasn't been our normal jack jumper basketball, and we had to had to take a stand, and um, we didn't make any changes. We just emphasised some of the things that we already do. Just let's really get these things right, and I think we've done that, and it's just laid a, a good foundation, and it's given us some good feedback. Do this, and you've got to give yourself a better opportunity to, to be successful. And that was the response I got from the players, and obviously they, they knew that I was saying that was our So I guess to get back to that. Yeah. I, I, I think everybody's in, you know, there's not like, oh, maybe we should change. Like, everybody's in. We just had to do it better. And it, they knew it. It was evidence-based. Um, started a practice, we've done it, and now it's transferred into games and just got to keep doing it. You know, that's, our work rate needs to be up. And uh, I think you, when we're at our best, we're up the floor and we're being disruptive and we're backing each other. And I think it gets, gets our crowd into it, gets our players into it, our bench into it. And, uh, you know, hopefully that continues to transfer into results. Just back on Mag, I know we spoke to you about him and Lee before. How exciting that is that now that we've got them to play with, I suppose, and how do you see it working? Yeah, I think, uh, I think you know, they'll share minutes and Fab's still in that, you know, rotation and there's always a space for, for JB. There's always a JB game or a, an opponent. So, you know, they're going to come out and perform and on any given night, one guy could play 30 minutes, the other guy could play five. But just to have that flexibility at that position and why they're similar, they're very different. And I think that gives us you know, more growth in our defence. Um, and it just, they just defend different ways. So it's good for our whole group. Marcus seems to have his critics at the start of the season. I'm not unfairly off him, but do you agree? Like, I think he's been fantastic for what he brought to the table. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know who the critics are. I haven't, I don't read or listen to too much. We got enough going on internally, so um, he just plays different for us than what he did for Melbourne United and what he did in Spain. And it just takes time for people to adapt to the way that we play. And we've asked him to do some things traditionally he hasn't done. And I think you see now just the fruits of his labour, his labour at work, his labour in the film room. Um, he's just put more time into his craft of how we want him to play and play better basketball. Um, but. You know, internally, he's highly valued, so... Is that his best game in the season or not? Uh, probably all round. Probably from a, from a growth standpoint in the areas that we've discussed. You know, he's still working really hard on his fouling, and I mean, he had four the other night, and they're just like, different type of fouls. Um, so just his foul discipline's really improved from our standpoint. His physicality, you know, and the way we play. You know, having your seven-foot centre up before and denying and that's a little bit different he's really bought into that and 
it's been a pleasure to coach, like really a real pleasure. Wants to learn, wants to get better. And you know, he's 29 years old, he's a veteran. So that's pleasing for our group. Yeah, the group still here. So you see you go for him, yeah, we'll start, or how's that good for the work? Oh, no, Matrix had to stick around. He's uh, he's still an integral part of our group. Like the depth of being able to train in the way we want to train, and um, but no, he's he's sticking around. But he can't play though. No, he's an injury replacement. So if there's no one injured, he's just he, he'll hear and he'll do his work on the floor, and he'll get coached like everybody else. Uh, to be determined. Okay. And break uh, You said the Mags a rematch to the. Teddy Bonds last year, different looking team last year. Um, how do you assess their start? We're certainly happy to challenge later on. Well, they're, they're coached by Modi Moore, and he's a very passionate coach and coming out of Perth the way they were the other night. Um, and he wasn't obviously happy with that. I expect uh, an absolute dogfight. And the only thing I have in my mind about New Zealand is last year's playoffs. That sits front and centre for me. Um, you, you want to be in the finals, you've got to almost go through them. Even though they're not there right now, they'll get better, they'll improve, they'll get guys back. But they're a hungry team and um, I, I expect nothing but their best effort on uh, on the Thursday game. Yeah, well, it's been a lot quieter this year than last. You expect mate, they didn't have a breakout game, you don't want to be in two, I suppose. Yeah, well, he's starting to find his rhythm and he's obviously come back from... Uh, an injury where he's missed a lot of basketball and, you know, Will's a boomer. You know, he's a very, very good basketball player. Um, once he gets his legs under him, you know, he, he can damage any team on any given night. He's proven that. Played in grand final series. Um, so we've just got to do the best to contain him and, you know, but as much as we were playing New Zealand, we're actually, and this has been part of our focus, is what do we do really well and what do we need to continue to do? And... We're going to treat Will like any other player we do in this league with great respect and um, get after him. Yeah, it's a whole new year, but I mean, it's just great respect for their organisation and what they've done. And, you know, they come out of some really difficult times with COVID and they go to a, a final series last year and they were very difficult to play against. and. It keeps front and centre of my mind, same as Melbourne United. You know, there's some teams that just leave a mark on you because they've been very good for over a period of time and um, feel like you've got to beat those teams if you want to be you know, the king of the mountain. And that's what every team's aiming to do. But when teams, when they beat you in the finals, they leave a mark on you and you, hope, you have to learn from that. And that's probably why I say front and centre of me. I don't know about anybody else, but it stays front and centre of me because I was sitting on that bench in New Zealand when Barry Brown was causing, you know, great problems. And he might not be there now, but that's a franchise that's, you know, steeped in great history. And uh, I respect him. Silverdome, last one. Silverdome um, didn't get a win there, I guess, last time. And looking forward to getting out there again in short space and time, I suppose. Is that a good thing? Yeah, I think it's good going straight back there, without a doubt. I think that's a real positive. Because uh, it is a little bit different to play in there. The rims are a little bit different. The lighting's a little bit different. But at the end of the day, we've got 4,000 Jack Jumper fans from the north of the state in there. And um, I think it's also been missed. People have talked about the winning and losing up there. We've played really good teams there. We've been a good team. And it's hard to win. And I, I think every time I get up on this platform, it's difficult to win games in the NBL. That's why, you know, you sit you're six and four and you're sitting somewhere in the top four and you can lose a game and all of a sudden you're in the bottom four. You know, so it's difficult to win and I don't think Launceston will be any different this week because my state won't be any different the week the weeks after.